The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is P A R K A Y. Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's a chilly evening in Summerfield. On the lawns, little snowmen huddle close to the ground, droopy and gray. Also a little droopy after a hard day's work at the water department, the great Gildersleeve gets out of his car and trudges up the front walk. <sighs> another day, another dollar. Unless Congress raises taxes again. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of ice on the sidewalk. More slippery than I thought. <laughs> hey, this is like glass. I can just get up these steps without falling. He, that was close. Hope I can make it to the front door. <sighs> Made it. Safe at home. <laughs> Marble. Marbles all over the hall floor. Leroy! Mr. Gilfrey, you hurt yourself? I don't know yet, Bertie. Uh oh, marbles. I bet you slipped on them. <laughs> well, that could be, Bertie. Where's Leroy? He's upstairs in his room, said he ain't feeling so good. When I get through with him, he'll feel a lot worse. <laughs> Leroy? Ready or not, here I come. Young man, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times not to leave your things scattered all over the floor. Oh, hi, Uncle. Um. Someday somebody's going to fall and break his neck. Was that big noise you? you... <laughs> yes, it was. And it's going to get noisy around here if you don't get downstairs this very minute and pick up those marbles. But, Uncle, I'm not feeling so good. You're not? Oh, yes, Bertie did say something about that. No. What seems to be the trouble? I got a toothache. You have? Yeah. Oh! Leroy, a tooth can't ache that much. Yes, it does. Every time I bite on it. Oh! Stop groaning, Leroy. You're not biting on it now. Well, I'll have to at supper time. Leroy, supper's an hour away. Now, straighten up, open your mouth, and let me see that tooth. Which one? Oh, my uh. Don't try to talk, Leroy. Just point. That one. Where? dark in here. <laughs> they all look alike to me. Oh, yes, there it is. Leroy, that's probably just your last baby tooth. It's being pushed out by your second teeth. <laughs> that's nothing to be concerned about. You don't have to chew on it. Well, my boy, it may bother you a little today, but tomorrow it'll be all right. It will? Yes, because the dentist will have it out in the jiffy. Ah! Oh, Leroy. I don't want to go to the old dentist. Leroy, but that baby tooth has to come out. You know that. If you won't go to the dentist, I'll have to pull it. You? Oh, my goodness. I can pull it out just as well as the dentist, Leroy. All I need is a piece of string. But, Uncle, it'll hurt. That's nonsense. Let your old uncle pull it. Oh, I don't... Or go to the dentist. Okay, you pull it. Uh, that's the spirit, my boy. Now, all we need is a piece of string. I'll go get one. Uh, doesn't hurt a bit now. Leroy, don't you try to get out of this. I'll be right back. Open your mouth, Leroy. Oh, 
Okay, Uncle, let's go along with the flash. Yeah. Let's see. I'll slip this knot right over the little tooth. Hmm? Pretty big one. Maybe not as easy as those tiny front ones I used to pull. What are you waiting for? Don't rush me, Leroy. I have to get the knot over the tooth first. Well, stop shaking and hurry up. I'm not shaking. Just trying to be gentle. There. Now, don't snap down on me, Leroy. Let's see, I, I think I'll stand about a foot away. Ready, Leroy? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> you sure you're ready? What's the matter with you? Aren't you afraid to pull it? Of course not. What makes you think so? Well, let's get it over with. Pull. Yeah, pull. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, Leroy, I've got a better idea. Why don't we tie it around the doorknob? I'll get some more string. You see, Leroy, this will make it easier on everybody. Now, all I have to do is slam the door. <sighs> Wonder if Marjorie would like to do that. <laughs> now, this is the night she's staying at Francie's. How about you, Funk? You're making me nervous. All right, my boy. Get set. I'm set. Gosh, slam it. Yeah, <laughs> slam it. Now, I'll slam it on the count of three. One, two, we'll start over. <laughs> One... Two, Bernie. Oh, for corn sakes. Leroy, your appointment with the dentist is all set now. Four o'clock this afternoon. Oh, do I have to go? The tooth has to come out. Don't try to get me to pull it again. That's a dentist job. Well, was your idea. Pass the toast, Leroy. Okay. Have some yourself? I don't want any. Now, Leroy. More coffee, Mr. Gill, please? Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Bertie, Leroy doesn't want to go to the dentist this afternoon. Isn't that silly? I don't know, Mr. Gill, please. Bertie don't like a dentist's office no more than Leroy. But, Bertie, this fear of a dentist's office is silly. It's nothing but a nightmare you build up in your own mind. Yes, sir. There was a time when people had reason to dread going to the dentist. Nowadays, with all the modern equipment, there's nothing to it. If you don't mind, dentist, will you go with me? Yes. Leroy, I have a job. I can't leave the office every time you have a toothache. You know, a little kid like me going up there all alone. My boy, you're 12 years old. It's time you learn to face things by yourself. Your old uncle can't hold your hand all the way through life. Uh, Cheer up, my boy. Run along to school. Just forget about your tooth till 4 o'clock. Oh, sure. Yeah, then have it out, and I'll bet the good fairy will leave a dime under your pillow tonight. A dime? For a tooth this big, couldn't a good fairy make it a quarter? Yeah. Leroy, this is no time to bargain. <laughs> it's costing me $5 to send you to the dentist. Okay. Now, have a good time at school. I'll talk to the good fairy about the quarter. And I'll have some hot soup for you when you come home to lunch, Leroy. Okay, goodbye, Bertie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Leroy. Leroy, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Bertie, you might pour me another cup of coffee. This has been a trying morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. And Bertie, how about some more scrambled eggs? I seem to have developed quite an appetite this morning. <laughs> yes, sir. Plenty of eggs. Little Leroy couldn't eat any. He didn't have much of an appetite. <laughs> Well, Leroy, I'll be all right. I sure hope so. What? That poor little boy going up there to that dentist's office all alone. Now, Bertie. I can't help thinking about that poor little boy sitting up there in that big chair, looking at that big grinder in the face all alone. Bertie, there won't be any grinding. He's only having a little loose tooth pulled. Yes, sir, but he still has to sit there and look at that big grinder all alone. <laughs> Bertie, he doesn't need anybody with him. Let's not make a big thing out of this. Yes, sir. Like you say, you can't leave the office every time Leroy has a toothache. Of course, some people would. Well, it's, it's not that, Bertie. It's, it's time Leroy grew up. He don't look grown up to me. He's just a little boy in that big chair, looking that big grinder in the face all alone. <laughs> oh, no. Bertie, tell him I'll meet him at the dentist's office at four o'clock. Well, I'm going to spend part of the afternoon with Leroy so he won't be all alone. Yes, 
Casey and I had better get the water report out this morning. Good morning, Bessie. Bessie! Bessie? Where is that girl? Oh, here's something in her typewriter. At least she started working on the report. Let's take a look and see how much she's done. Yeah. Dear Mr. Gillisleeve, I've gone out for a malted milk. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> At 9.15 in the morning? You suppose she drinks those for breakfast? No. <laughs> no wonder she never gets any work done around here. I'm going to have to do something about that girl. <sighs> yeah, there she is now. Bessie, come in here and take a letter. I'll be glad to, Mr. Gildersleeve. Care to have me sit on your lap? <laughs> Hooker, what are you doing pussyfooting around my office so early in the morning? Well, I was wondering if you'd care to step out and have a cup of coffee with me, Gildy. Judge, Bessie's already out having a malted milk. What kind of a water department do you think I run around here? Well... Wait till she comes back, then we'll go out for coffee. <laughs> Just as you like, Gildy. And I've got to come back and clean up a lot of work, Judge. I'm taking Leroy to the dentist this afternoon. Oh? Is the boy having trouble with his teeth? No, he's going to get his first shave. <laughs> what? Skip it, Judge, skip it. Just having his last baby tooth out, and he was a little nervous about going alone. Isn't that silly? Not at all, Gilday. I remember I hated to go to the dentist when I was a boy. Are you trying to tell me they had dentists in those days? <laughs> Gilday? <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're right at that age when your dental work is about to begin. Uh, what do you mean? How long since you had a checkup, Gilday? Checkup? Well, I have a checkup every six months. Unless something comes up. Business or something. Answer the question, Gilday. How long has it been? Well, I've been pretty busy. You big fat faker, you. Gildy, I'll bet you haven't been to the dentist in five years. Four. I mean... My, my. I'd hate to be in your shoes. A lot can happen in four years. Oh. Bessie, is that you? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Is that you? Y yes, Bessie. And this is Judge Hooker. I know. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Good morning, Bessie. Bessie, you and your malted milk have been keeping me waiting. Oh, I'm sorry I took so long, Mr. Gildersleeve, but it was so thick I had to eat it with a spoon. Yes, yes. Let's get down to business. What are my appointments, Bessie? The judge and I want to step out for a cup of coffee. Oh, I have them all written right down here on my pad. Well, you have a very efficient secretary, Gildy. Judge, how did you ever get to be a lawyer? <laughs> Go ahead, Bessie. Yes, sir. Now, let me see. At 10 o'clock, you have an appointment with the Commissioner of Streets, Bridges, and Sewers. Well, let's postpone that till tomorrow. And at 11 o'clock, you have an appointment with the mayor. I'll be there. Anything else, Bessie? No, sir. Oh, except at 4 o'clock, you have an appointment with the dentist. Bessie, that's Leroy's appointment. I am just going along with him. Oh, but Mr. Gildersleeve, the dentist called this morning and made it your appointment, too. Huh? Well, he said you were overdue for your own checkup so he could take you both at the same time. What? <laughs> Shut up, you old goat. Hello there, Bertie. Howdy, Mr. Wall. Say, Bertie, the other day I heard you giving Leroy some special instructions. Yes, sir, I was telling him that a growing boy is something like a furnace. You got to keep them stoked up with plenty of nourishment during these cold days. Now, party margin. Now, there's one of those real nourishing foods, Mr. Wall. Ah, uh, certainly is, Bertie. And party tastes so good. It's one nourishing food I don't have any trouble getting Leroy to eat. Well, I guess that luxury flavor is what everybody notices when they try parquet. It has, well, such a light, such a delicate flavor, even though parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. No matter how you prefer to use parquet, for cooking or on hot vegetables or as a delicious spread on rolls or bread, that luxury taste is what you notice and you remember. Sure is. That parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. So, friends, next time you go to the store, why not ask for parquet? Enjoy the light, delicate flavor of a margarine made from the selected products of American farms. The delicious luxury spread that tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. 
He agreed to take Leroy to the dentist this afternoon, but he didn't know the dentist was going to take him. He's thinking it over now as he walks past Peavy's drugstore. What am I worrying about? Some people would let a trip to the dentist upset their whole day. Not me. No, sir. I think I'll step on these scales here and see if I've lost any weight. Here's a penny. Let's see what's on the card. Hmm. I've lost one pound. What does my fortune say? You're about to face a painful experience. Move cautiously. <laughs> Maybe I'd better try it again. These machines are always a little off. Let's see. What's on the back of this one? You are about to face a painful experience. Move cautiously. <laughs> Don't worry, I will. I think I'll go in peavies for an aspirin. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> I noticed you weighing yourself out there. Yes, B.B. In fact, I noticed you weighed yourself twice. Right again. Well, if our scales didn't prove satisfactory, the pharmacy will be glad to refund your penny. Yeah. <laughs> that won't be necessary, P.B. Oh, give me a Coke. Very okay, well. Give me some aspirin, too. Aspirin, you say? That's what I said, P.B. You didn't take them both at the same time? Yes, P.B. My, my, you must be taking this trip to the dentist seriously. What do you know about my trip to the dentist? The judge was in. You know, that old busybody. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, speaking for Peavy's Pharmacy, may I extend our sympathies? What? <laughs> and if you should need any medication or sick room supplies... Please, and... Peavy, I won't need any of those things. My teeth are all right. And then why are you so worried? Well, I just don't like the dentist's attitude. How's that? He called my office at the last minute when I had a lot of work to do and disrupted my whole day. I might just take my business somewhere else. Well, if you're in the market for a new dentist, there's that fellow on the second floor across the street, Dr. Hatfield. Oh, yes. Is he any good, Peavy? Well, he's got somebody always in the chair. You can see him working up there at the window now. Oh, yes. Well, he's got his sleeves rolled up. Looks like an extraction job from here. Extraction? You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, when things are slow here in the pharmacy, I... Spend many an afternoon watching Dr. Hatfield in action. What a pleasant pastime, Peavy. <laughs> well, it does pass the time. Saw a fellow up there just the other day. He was in the chair four hours. He was? Yes, he and Dr. Hatfield had quite a tussle. Looked like a regular wrestling match. You yeah. must have needed a lot of work. I understand the poor fellow hadn't been to the dentist in two years. Two years? How long has it been since you visited the dentist, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I think it's... Never mind, Peavy. It's none of your business. <laughs> the judge already told me four. <laughs> but that doesn't make any difference. I'll bet I'll be out of the dentist's chair in 15 minutes. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Oh, Bessie. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't look very well. I don't feel very well, either. Oh, you'll feel better after you go to the dentist. What? I'm going into my office, and I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, sir. Can't frighten me. My teeth are all right. I think. Let's see, where's that little mirror I keep in my desk drawer? Oh, uh, here it is. Oh, uh, well, what is he? Oh, for brother. Yes, Bessie? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I forgot to tell you. Miss Fairchild telephoned where you were out. Adeline? Yes. Shall I call her back? Not now, Bessie. I'm busy. Yes, sir. Let me see. Oh, my teeth look pretty good. Sure. I don't know, though. Four years is a long time. Could be trouble underneath. Wonder if he'll have to drill. Well, what if he does? Dennis drills. Don't bother me. I wonder what Doc Cobb will do to me this afternoon. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, climb right up here in the chair. Oh, thank you, Dr. Cobb. <laughs> nice, soft chair. 
We believe in making our patients as comfortable as possible. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen you for about four years, have we? <laughs> I'm sure you won't find anything wrong, Dr. Cobb. I take very good care of my teeth. Open wide. <laughs> Brush them twice a day, up and down. <laughs> good for you. Open wide, please. Uh, wide, oh, yes. I'm sure you won't find anything. Well. Huh? What do we have here? Oh, um, that tooth's a little sensitive, Doc. It's your cold hands. <laughs> but I'm sure you won't have to drill. You see, Doc, what are you doing? This won't hurt a bit. But... Oh, stop that! What the... Bessie, get your hand off that buzzer. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, I always buzz you when someone comes in. Leroy's here. Leroy? Hi, Uncle. Leroy, what are you doing down here? What's the matter? Nothing. Everything's great. I just saw Dr. Cobb and canceled my appointment. What? Look, out, no tooth. You came out while I was chewing some taffy. Neat, huh? Well, yes, Leroy. Did Dr. Cobb say you're all right? Sure. He said he's glad it turned out this way. Now he can spend the extra time on you. It, what? <laughs> Sorry, Uncle. I know how you feel. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, so long, Uncle. I want to go show Bertie. Uh, Leroy. Yeah? Uh, never mind. Go ahead, my boy. He wouldn't want to go with me. Uh, 3.15. 45 more minutes than I go to the chair. Uh, come to think of it, why should I be going? I have my water report to get out. It's silly of me to neglect my work. Why, George, my first obligation is to the water department. Teeth or no teeth. Bessie, get Dr. Cobb on the telephone for me. I'm canceling my appointment. Why? You are? I have to get my water report out this afternoon. You know that. Oh, I'll be glad to do it for you, Mr. Gildersleeve, so you can go to the dentist. Bessie, let's not try to assume too much authority around here. I'll do my work. You do yours. <laughs> yes, sir. When I get him, I'll buzz you. Never mind. Leave that buzzer alone. I'll pick up the receiver now. Dr. Cobb speaking. Uh, Dr. Cobb? Uh, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I suppose you know Leroy got rid of his trouble, all right. Oh, yes. Well, now, about my appointment for 4 o'clock. I'll be all ready for you, Gildersleeve, and it's nice of you to call and confirm it. Huh? Time is very important to a dentist, and you'd be surprised at the number of people who call up and cancel at the last minute, claiming they're busy. Well, um... And I hate to have anyone cancel unless it's very important. Oh, naturally. So I'm happy to hear you're coming. Well, uh, that's what I called to tell you. I'm happy... To, I mean, I'm coming. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Trapped. Uh, Bessie. Yes, sir? I'm going to the dentist after all. You may get out the water report. Gildersleeve, I thought you said... Get busy on the report, Bessie. It's time you assume some responsibility around here. Yes, sir. <laughs> you all let me back home. Well, Adeline, come in. Uh, hello, Throckmorton. Well, Adeline, you look wonderful. Thank you, sir. Good, good to see you. How you been? Oh, I'm as busy as a little bee redecorating my house, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't got much time, Adeline. I have to keep a little appointment. What's well, Throckmorton, have you forgotten about little old Adeline? Hmm? This is the afternoon you promised to help me pick out my new kitchen sink. Sink? Oh, sink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How could I have forgotten that? I don't know. She was so cute the other day, insisting that you help pick out the sink. You being the water commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> but since you have another appointment, you just go right ahead. Probably much more important than picking out a sink. Well, now, Adeline, maybe it isn't. I promised you first, and a man shouldn't break his promise to a woman. Well. <laughs> Where's my hat? Bessie, I'm going out. Call and cancel my appointment. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, what do I say? Well, just say I'm out buying um, a reservoir. A reservoir? Well, a small one. Sink. <laughs> but, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bessie, just say some important business came up. Yes, sir. Yeah, come along, Adeline. <laughs> Well, Adeline, we've got the whole afternoon. Well, we look first for your sink. How about Hogan, brother? Uh, that's too easy. We'll find it there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go across the street to Peavy's and have a soda. 
I feel like celebrating. My, Throckmorton, but you're happy. Yeah, I just got a reprieve. Don't have to go to the chair this afternoon. <laughs> what? Nothing. Uh, Joke. <laughs> He's worse than Bessie. <laughs> But it take my arm crossing the street, Adeline. Pretty slushy. Well, thank you, kind sir. Watch out for the puddles. Gracious! How will I ever get across this big one? Well, I'll carry you across. Uh, drop one! <laughs> mm, deeper than I thought. <laughs> oh, there. Oh, no mercy. You're strong. Put me down now. I don't think I will. Let's go look for another puddle. Oh. <laughs> Well, if it isn't Commissioner Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Dr. Cobb. Hey, hop down, Adeline. Um, Dr. Cobb, meet Miss Fairchild, my neighbor. Adeline, this is Dr. Cobb, my dentist. Uh, how do you do, Miss Fairchild? How do you do, Dr. Cobb? Isn't Mr. Gildersleeve gallant, Doctor? Uh, yes, yes. He seems to have a remarkable faculty for combining pleasure with uh, business. <laughs> Hasn't it, though? He's taken the rest of the day off just to help me buy a sink. Oh? Is that line? Did I say something wrong? Uh, Dr. Cobb, I, I guess I can pick out a sink some other time. <laughs> I've just decided I'll be at your office at 4 o'clock. <laughs> well, I won't be there. You won't? I thought I'd take advantage of your broken appointment and go see Dr. Hatfield. The dentist? Yes. My lower right bicuspid started aching this afternoon. I guess I've been putting it off too long. You have? Uh, frankly, Mr. Gildersleeve... I hate to go to the dentist. You do? <laughs> Come on, Doc. Let's go all. Let's all go out and take the sink. When it comes to using delicious spreads on piping hot rolls or crisp toast, you can't get too much of a good thing. And parquet margarine is a perfect spread to use. Every touch of parquet makes baked goods and hot breads taste better. That's because parquet is prepared with all the care of a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. Yet this same margarine, so light, so delicate in flavor, costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. Tomorrow, get a pound of parquet. It's nourishing. It's reinforced with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. And it tastes so good, it tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Folks, my old friend, Dr. Cobb, has something to say to you. See your dentist twice a year. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Cobb. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do, too, from now on. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Do you ever get hungry for a piece of mellow, good, aged American cheese? You know, the kind that comes in the big golden wheels? It's been a long time since there's been much on the market, but now Kraft has plenty of it. Just this last year, for the first time since before the war, Kraft has been sending lots of fine American cheese to the curing rooms, aging it to a mellow perfection. And now it's ready for you at your dealers. The next time you shop, Ask him for a big cut of old-fashioned, natural American cheese. The kind that's been so carefully aged by the master cheesemakers of Kraft. This is NBC.